Hi there, this is Dr. Matthew Pfeiffer. I'm presenting a case today for a clavicle non-union and how I incorporate biologics into my non-union cases in order to get the bone to heal. My case today is a 60-year-old man that is a field worker. He was involved in a motor vehicle accident six months prior. Directly after that accident, he went right back to work and since that time continues to have left shoulder pain and a lump in his chest that bothers him. This is a very stoic guy. He came into my office, his past medical history, he had some mild hypertension. Otherwise, he is a non-smoker, he has no diabetes, he has a low body weight, his BMI is only 25. No evidence of anything that would make me worry about an infection. Uh, I know we're gonna be talking about non-unions, so I always look for anything that's it's going to key me off to an infection going on within the non-union. On his physical exam of his shoulder, he was afebrile, so that brings infection down as well. He has a gross deformity and a lump over the mid-shaft of his clavicle. It is tender in that area. He has signs of motion with the fracture and movement of his arm. Fortunately, there is no skin compromise or tenting. X-rays taken in my office that day show evidence of a mid-shaft clavicle fracture. It is displaced over two centimeters. As you can see, there's no evidence of fracture callus, and there's no erosive property to the end of the clavicle uh, at the ends, which also makes my concern for infection lower. I'm always looking for infection for non-unions. Overall, his diagnosis was a mid-shaft clavicle non-union. His concern for infection risk was very low. There was no signs of erosiveness. At this point, I did not order a CT scan. I know some, uh, sometimes we do for non-unions, but it was not gonna help me in my surgical planning. I knew it was a non-union, it was mobile, so I let the CT go. Reasons for the non-union, you always gotta, as a physician, look and see why this thing did not heal. For uh, this patient, I believe it was motion. He immediately went right back to work in the field, working hard, he had motion, he had nothing to strut it, and he didn't have any downtime. On the x-rays, it did appear a little oleotrophic or atrophic. Uh, this typically means he's not getting uh, the best biologic response, and this is something I want to augment. As I said, he's a very hard worker. He had no downtime on this fracture. I think that all contributed to the reason for the non-union. The treatment for this was surgery. It was a non-union takedown. I did find a fibrous type non-union between the two uh, ends. I did an osteotomy and cleaned up both of the ends and got good bleeding bone. I did an open reduction internal fixation with a superior plate, and I augmented this as well with biologics. The biologics I chose for this case was AlloSync, which is a DBM that is pliable. You can mix with blood products. And what I mixed for the blood products was leukocyte-rich PRP that was neutrophil deficient or low. And I also took bone marrow concentrate from his bilateral proximal tibias, and this is what I mixed with the AlloSync. It forms a very nice putty. You can see there on the right, the putty surrounding the fracture area. This is the intraoperative x-rays. I used the superior plate, and I typically will use a 2-0 lag screw. This is my kind of go-to screw fixation to really hold the two ends together after I osteotomized and cleaned them up, so I had good bleeding bone. The reasoning why I do biologic augments with the AlloSync, the bone marrow concentrate, and the PRP, the AlloSync is both osteoconductive and osteoinductive. The bone marrow concentrate has the osteogenic properties to it. So those three properties are all the properties that we want and we search for in order to heal the fracture. The leukocyte-rich PRP that is neutrophil depleted initiates the inflammatory response. For me, this is like stoking the fire or the healing of the bone, being that the initial phase of bone healing is the inflammatory response. Together, all of these properties, the biological augments, will help the bone heal, and this is why I do it. Postoperatively, I made this patient non-weight bearing. Uh, I put him in a postoperative sling. I showed him and had him do pendulum exercises to keep some of the stiffness down in his shoulder. He followed up with me in the office in two weeks. I gave him a physical therapy script. At that point, I allowed him to do progressive stretching or passive range of motion of the shoulder with physical therapy. At six weeks, I say, okay, you're pretty much free and you can be progressive weight bearing as tolerated, okay to return to the activities. This is my typical postoperative protocol for my clavicle fractures. At my postoperative visits at two weeks, the patient was doing great. Here you can see evidence of the plate, the lag screw. His next visit was at six weeks. He was doing great then, actually, of course, this guy started doing things a little sooner than I wanted to and started going back to work a week before. You can see now the great incorporation of the bone surrounding the fracture site. And then at his final visit, which was three months, he was back to normal life. He had no pain. Radiographically, he had signs of great healing. So it was a successful surgery, and he was doing well. Thank you.